Hello everyone, it's Raven here with another battle replay of the Dark Elves vs. High Elves. So the Civil War continues, the struggle goes on as this Dreadlord faces off against the mighty Tyrion on his famed Mount Malhandir in his beautiful Thilmar armor. So he's going to be moving across the battlefield with 94 movement speed. On top of that, he's got this Phoenix, uh, Flamespire Phoenix right here. 120 movement speed. This is the fastest unit in the entire game. On top of that, it's got 70 fire resistance, 70% fire resistance, excuse me. So if you actually got a fight with a Flamespire Phoenix and a Star Dragon, funny thing is the, the Flamespire Phoenix actually might win. Because it has pretty de decent armor piercing damage, and it has the chance to be reborn. So uh, it's going to be negating all the damage from the, the dragon, the Star Dragon, because it actually does fire damage. And on top of that, uh, if, it, if it gets reborn with like half HP or something like that, like there's nothing the dragon can do. That's that's a pretty funny engagement. I'm, I'm trying to get a matchup like that, but... I haven't been able to do it yet. We're, we're going to be able to do it at some point in my life, though. I swear. I'm going to try for that. So I think it'd be pretty funny. So right here, we have uh, two Cold One Knights right here. These guys have very high armor-piercing damage. And we have a Dreadlord, Sword and Crossbow on a Cold One Knight. A Sorceress on a Cold One as well. Cold One on a Cold One Knight. On a Cold One. <laughs> He's not on a Cold One Knight. That would be pretty funny, though. Uh, so these guys all have extreme armor-piercing damage. And that's just supplied because of the mount, obviously. So 30 right here, plus a bonus of versus large of 14. And I put their armor piercing damage versus large targets at 44 because a bonus versus large or a bonus versus infantry counts as armor piercing damage. So right here, this Dreadlord is going to be doing amazing work. He's got 280 armor piercing damage for his uh, melee attacks, 140 per projectile, and there's two of them per projectile attack uh, for armor piercing damage. And right here, the Sorceress hits for 200 armor piercing damage because she's on a cold one. So even though you know she is just a Sorceress, she's still got 60 armor, pretty decent health pool, and 200 armor piercing damage. That's... It's pretty substantial. She's going to be doing a lot of work for me. Hopefully, <laughs> if she survives. Then over here, we have two units of Bleak Swords uh, flanking three units of Black Arc Corsairs. And I kind of like these guys because they have really good armor. Keep them a little bit healthy against archers, but they have no shield, obviously, so they're just going to get pegged in the face every single day by any arrow fired at them. So that's just kind of, you know, whatever. But they have a pretty good bonus versus infantry as well, seven. So putting their armor piercing damage at the 14. Then back here, we have the Dark Shards, two units of them. And really, I just love these guys. The armor, the shield right here is amazing. They don't need armor, they have a shield, right? 55% of all projectiles fired at them is going to be, are going to be blocked if it's coming from the front because, as you can see here, only their right leg and their head are just popping out and to the side of this giant tower shield. And on top of that, they're going to be firing two projectiles, each doing 11 armor-piercing damage. That's just outrageous. So if they can get into a slugfest, even with these archers over here with light armor, 40 armor, and 180 range. That is huge range, right? And they have really good missile damage, but their armor-piercing damage is very low. Three armor piercing damage. If it's a slugfest between these guys and dark shards, 100% of the time I'm putting my money on the dark shards. They're going to take a little bit of damage walking into the fray because they only have 125 to the 180 range of these guys. But if they don't get microed back and start turning around and shooting, these guys can duke it out with any archer unit pretty much and come out on top because they just have that shield and it's always active. So people are like, ah, oh, Quarrelers have shields too. But Corollers only pull out their shields for the dwarves if they're in melee combat. Then they start blocking 55% of the projectiles. While they're shooting at somebody, their shield is on their back, so it does nothing for them. So just remember that. These guys are a, a terror. Take care of uh, take care of these guys if, if you're the Dark Elves. If you're, if you're uh, High Elves or somebody else, also take care of them. But in the kind of, you know, take them out and execute them kind of way. Not the take them to dinner, make sure they're okay, supported by very strong infantry on the front and the back and all that nonsense. And then right here... Harganeth Executioner. So this is the real meat and potatoes of my army besides my Cold One Knights over there. Because these guys have all the armor-piercing damage that my infantry lacks. So you have lots of armor-piercing options as Dark Elves, right? You know, everything over here has armor-piercing damage. Everything right here has armor-piercing damage. But your front line, unless you're up to a Harganeth Executioner or a Black Guard and Nagaron, you don't have a lot of AP damage in the front line. Bleak Swords, let's... I don't actually know how much armor-piercing these guys have. Seven. And then 14. You know, so... Decent. Decent for these Black Arc Corsairs, but the 100 armor and the, the ridiculous bonus of 14 or something like that. 14 bonus versus infantry, so a total of 43% uh, 43 armor piercing damage Excuse me, versus infantry is outrageous. So these guys will decimate almost anything in the game, point blank. So let's go ahead and take a look at my opponent's build here. Two Illyrian Reavers with archers. One Illyrian Reaver over here, just regular. No archer, you know, no bows. I guess he ran out of money. They're going to be uh, coming back in here to support these guys. Two units of White Lines of Trace. Now, these guys are really good. They have high armor-piercing damage and pretty good melee stats, but once they dip below that 50% uh, HP, HP threshold, excuse me, they lose these buffs right here, and they're going to start taking a lot of damage because they're going to be like a typical greatsword infantry unit with very low melee defense, 
They're going to start taking a lot of damage because they're, they're more meant for the shock and awe, kind of charging in, just doing a whole bunch of damage, and then just getting out. What, what is this? Forest Rider? Wow, they actually get a bonus in the forest. I, I had no idea, so... Wow. All right, everybody knows that now. They have a bonus in the forest, a def defensive advantage, and a melee attack advantage. So I guess they're going to get a bonus if they can fight in these trees right here, which they, they do end up doing, so good for them. We'll actually see what that can do. I wish I could click on them and tell you. I, maybe I'll do that after this. I'll, I'll test it out and figure it out because you can do that. You can see hidden uh, bonuses or debuffs based on a unit and you like put it on a certain terrain with your mouse or something like that. Like You don't see it directly in the stats, but if you hover your mouse over something while that unit's selected, it'll tell you the debuff or bonus that they'll get. So we'll take a look at that. Next, we have three units of, light, of archers with light armor, excuse me, and a eagle claw bolt thrower. Right here we have a Noble on a horse with a halberd. Very, very good unit right here. High AP and good bonus versus large too, like 40 or something like that. 35, so not bad. So 255 damage versus a large target. That's going to be a lot of damage versus somebody like my Dreadlord over here. But he'll be doing the same thing right back. And then over here, Flamespire Phoenix, already talked about it, can re be reborn, 70% physical resistance, and it can also like poop out lots of bombs, 10 of them. Uh, with the wake of fire which does really really good damage and right here Tyrion of course the beautiful beautiful prince of uh of all the high elves right here so he should have been king <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say faint and repose very good ability uh, look at all those bonuses for him so he can he's gonna be duking it out with the best of them for sure they didn't bring the uh, heart of Avalorn I think that's what it is for him to give him the regeneration of HP they should have brought that I would 100% bring that every single, every time you take Tyrion because, you know, just having that healing on top of Faint and Repost keeps this guy alive for so long. And his stats are so good that when he gets that huge healing buff, it's just like, what can you do? Like, it's going to be such an attritious fight against him almost every single time. 45% fire resistance, 15% missile resistance. Let's get this show on the road. So, right here, I start moving in with my Cold One Knights. And they're going to be trying to chase down these guys. But obviously, they have 90 speed compared to the 66 and, like, 68 of my Lord. So, they're going to be doing some initial shots on these guys. But they have a shield and pretty good armor. So, I'm not too worried about that. But they are in a hard group. And I see this Phoenix coming. And I was uh, charging after these guys. So, I was like, all right, turn around, turn around. But then they start blobbing together. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And he starts chasing him, so I'm like, all right, juke him out. And I'm like, this grouping stuff is, like, really messing me up. So I'm trying to get rid of it. And they just get bombed over and over and over. And you can see the HP dropping on these guys so quickly. Losing two models between the, the units right here. But I'm going to be able to get a charge off against these Illyrian Reavers right here. Because they're going to try and intercept me while these guys fire in. And I'm like, all right, I'll take that engagement. Because watch this charge right here. It's going to kill, like, ten people. All right, took out nine, but immediately they're going to go down a total of 17, 18 models, more and more. These guys, I tried to chase these guys for a little bit, then I was like, you know what? These guys are routing out. The, Fe the Phoenix landed. We're going to try and get rid of the Phoenix. These guys rampaged, so I was like, can't pull them out. And right here, the Lord's just taking damage, so I need to need to help him because he can't push through these guys anymore because they're like, they're out of control. They don't want to listen to anybody. Tyrion comes in here, so I'm like, you know what? We're going to sacrifice the cavalry for this engagement and try and get off as much armor-piercing damage as possible against these guys. They're all going to start routing because of terror and just being shot to pieces. But across the front line right here, these guys were trying to target uh, one of these Spearman units. I think it was that guy right there. So they ended up being in this really wide formation like this and kind of going into melee a little bit. So that's unfortunate for me. I don't think Guard is on either, so they're not firing at all. But right here, these uh, Black Arc Corsairs took the brunt of the charge versus these White Lines of Trace who are now going to be getting their faces beat in by these Harganeth Executioners. They, lose, they lost one model right now. They're up to 22 kills. Right here, these guys are up to 24 kills. Haven't lost a model. These guys up to two because they can barely reach these Spearmen through all these Black Arc Corsairs. These guys are very, very healthy. Like I said, Black Arc Corsairs, very good stats compared to like Spearmen and stuff like that. Even though they have such high melee defense, once that like you know 50% HP threshold gets cracked, they're going to drop down. There it goes, right there. And then Martial Prowess and Murderous Mastery go off. And now the game is on. So you see this Phoenix right here, he's absolutely going to be decimated because right here, 20% extra armor piercing damage, 25% melee attack, and 30% vigor for everybody. So these guys are hitting very, very hard right now. 13 armor piercing missile damage per shot on this guy right here. So this Phoenix is like, I'm getting the hell up out of town right here. These guys are ripping me apart. And these guys are going to turn around very slowly. I wish they would have turned around faster. They probably could have got a few shots off. But these guys are where they need to be. And they're going to get some good shots off on him. And right here, the frontline engage engagement is mine. It's won. It's done. The, the high elves are gone, right? So right here, I just start sticking Harganeth Executioners on anybody I can. 
putting any uh, Black Art Corsair unit alive on anybody I can. The, the Sorceress got eaten alive by these uh, white lines of trace because I was running her away, but then I lost micro because I was trying to micro everything else because the frontline engagement was just being destroyed by me. So, um, yeah, I couldn't really do anything for her, and then she just gets chopped to pieces over here. She, yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. She's uh, right here. Oh, she disappeared. Yep, she got trampled in the mud by uh, White Lions. It is what it is. And these guys get right here get shot up pretty good by these two units of uh, Dark Shards. And they're going to turn and start firing on these White Lines of Trace. But they are in a weird spot where they have to, like, fire over the hill. hill. They don't have an angle. So they have to, like, hinder their accuracy quite heavily right here as they start doing this really ridiculous arc. Actually, right there was a pretty good shot on these guys. But every shot after that, I promise, is this ridiculously high arc. And it's going to be really bad on accuracy. Right there, the Lord fires in and gets, like, four kills. Very good stuff. Right here, Tyrion is fighting for his life with this noble, and it's just its just a bad situation. They're surrounded by so much armor-piercing damage. Cold One Knights, Hargoneth Executioners, Black Art Corsairs coming in here to fill the gaps, to not let them out. And right here, the Phoenix was chopped apart by the uh, Hargoneth Executioners and some Cold One Knights right here, you can see. They actually died and never got to be reborn, so very unfortunate. He lost a lot of HP potential right there, and could have used that terror very heavily right here. These guys lost their movement commands for some reason. They just stood Oh, they got charged. That's why. I never knew why. These guys got charged by these Illyrian Reavers with uh, the Illyrian Reaver archers and it just stayed there. And I never re engaged them on these archers. So they're just going to stay here and take every single arrow shot straight to the face. Even though they have 100 armor, they're just, <laughs> they're just getting chopped up by these poor arrows. Oh my god, that's so unfortunate. I've never understood why. So right here, I'm like, what can I do? So Tyrion starts coming in with his lord, and I start trying to turn around and do a charge, but I don't get it off. But you know what? I'm like, all right, I see the opportunity here. Dark shards start moving in. They have the AP. Tyrion has no shield. 125 armor won't matter when these guys start firing in on him. We're going to just go ahead and watch this volley come in. 2,400 HP to begin with. About 400 damage gone right there. 400 HP, rather, excuse me. And then these guys, I'm like, all right, you know, they finished firing on these guys for a little bit, so I'm going to start moving them in a lot closer and try to get much more accurate shots than these guys. Another volley of, like, 400 HP gone off the Tyrion right there. These Harkoneth Executioners are still super healthy, and these White Lines of Trace just don't have the stats to deal with them. Like I said, once their stats go away from that martial uh, prowess, it's just there's nothing they can do against them. Tyrion right here didn't have the Heart of Avalorn and just doesn't have any healing to be able to help himself. And right here, he's just going to run from the field, and right here, it's just hopeless for this poor noble. He's trapped against all these guys. My lord right here is going to be firing against uh, these dudes for a moment and then decide to start charging them because if he just stands there, he's going to get torn apart by the missile fire. So I start moving forward my own dark shards and start firing against these uh, archers with light armor because they're almost out of ammo. So they're either going to be in melee or running away. So I need to chase them down right now. These Hargoneth Executioners got absolutely destroyed. I lost micro on them the entire time. A full strength Hargoneth Executioner unit just completely decimated. They could have done so much for me, but instead these archers just sat there and laughed and pointed and shot them right in the crotch, the face, the chest, whatever they wanted to shoot them at, really. They were just using them for target practice, but in the end it won't matter. They're all going to die. <laughs> Because the Dark Elves right here are prevailing quite heavily. Look at all these arrows coming in. Like I said, it's going to be a slugfest between these two, and they'll win every single time. These guys are going to try and rear charge them, and it's not going to be enough to be able to get rid of these guys. And everybody's going to start taking army losses because my lord came in here, got pulled back from these archers because I got these guys in range, and started beating up on this noble. And with all the leadership gone from the field, the noble and Tyrion... Everybody was just like, there's nothing we can do against them. These Hargoneth Executioners are going to execute us. So that was a very, very fun game. I love that build. I really messed up that cavalry engagement. I should have kept that one back and just kind of like used it somewhere else. But I was like, you know what? Whatever. It's got him distracted. He pulled in a white line to trace unit for a little bit and some other stuff in. So I was like, whatever. We'll do this. So I'm going to go into custom battles real quick. And I do have the testing on so I can test some stuff. And what we're going to do is go through... I think I have the the testing map on as well, all the way down here. I do the pit. Uh, so what we're gonna do is high elves versus high elves, because what I really want to see is uh, we'll do. Oh, I don't have one v one testing. That's fine. We'll do like a princess versus a princess, right? And then we'll do a star dragon versus a flame spire phoenix. So I don't care if I win or lose. I just want to see what this. Uh, what, what this Flamesfire Phoenix can do against the dragon. That's the real thing. We'll, we'll do two. Two. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, here we go. So, I'm gonna try and get the engagement against these guys as quick as possible. I'm gonna, like, try and pause it or something as fast as I can. 
as soon as it goes off. Come on, give it to me. Pause, 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 pause. Okay. Duh, I gotta start battle. So what I'm gonna do is these bad boys right there. Put her uh, right here. And start battle, pause. All right. And then you can just start shooting this princess. All right, so we're gonna start going in straight away. These flames, fire phoenixes, and the breath attacks. Oh, oh god, my poor princess. That's okay. But the damage is there. So honestly, that does fire damage as well. Actually, it might do magic damage if I can position this flag to look at one of these guys. It does fire damage, so that's not not bad. Princess right here is gonna end up beating mine, so we're gonna fast forward. But look at this. Flames, fire phoenixes just don't care about these damn these stupid star dragons. They're like, whatever. I don't care what you are. We're gonna start beating your ass. So this guy right here, they're actually trying to get through trying to path very, very aggressively towards my princess. These guys need to turn around. These guys need to start fighting here, but look at that. So it's it's kind of a, a mixed engagement right here because like the leadership's dropping because I don't have any uh, ground units. But as you can see, like they're really, really healthy. Even if those breath attacks had hit them, like they, they would be able to just tank a lot of that damage. And this guy's really, really beat up while this guy's really, really healthy. This guy's pretty beat up too. But that's because he got hit by these guys both for a little bit, and he's probably getting fired on by the princess, I'm not sure. But it just goes to show that these guys can can last in combat versus the dragons for a long time. So right there, the breath attack actually hit and didn't do very much, and this guy's getting beat on by both of these star dragons. And he's lasting for a long time. And that's just 1v1. <laughs> so they do last for quite a bit. Like, 1v1 with the rebirth, they can do a whole lot versus a star dragon. I'm not sure if they can actually win anymore, like I was talking about. But they're the pinch. But, but excuse me, the potential is there. God, I couldn't talk for a second. The potential is there for a phoenix to do so much good stuff for you. So now we're gonna go to somewhere with a lot of forest real quick, so I can see. I can point out these uh, hidden bonuses or debuffs, like I was talking about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some deflect shots, forest strider. And these guys, let's see. We'll do Dragon Princes, yeah. They're not gonna have a bonus in the trees. So we're gonna do both of these units right here, right? I'll put you on your little horse. So now I'm not I'm obviously not gonna fight this army. I'm just showing you the hidden debuffs if I can, and then we'll call it quits on this video. But yeah, the the Phoenix Phoenix versus Star Dragon matchup, that's that's real. It can happen, I promise you guys. I've I've done it versus a computer and campaign before, and I was like, wow, this is this is pretty impressive, not gonna lie. <laughs> I was very surprised. So let's go ahead and, okay, perfect. They're all in the forest right here. So if we go ahead, pause, click on these white lines of trace, and we just highlight, you know, the forest, and we just sit here for a second. Plus 110, or 110 melee attack in the forest, right? 120 melee defense in the forest. Whereas if you click on a Dragon Prince unit and they don't have a bonus in the forest, they actually are debuffed in a forest because they are a cavalry unit, they can have a debuff of... Please show me. Here, maybe it's because I'm on them. Minus, uh, or down to 80% speed and down to 80% melee attack. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's how you find these hidden bonuses. And it's the same thing for like uh, wood elves. If you put uh, people, wow, she's, a, no, we'll do that too. We'll just do wood elves real quick. So you can see, you know, up 10 melee attack, up 20% melee uh, defense, and down 20% speed and 20% melee defense for cavalry units in a forest. So they slow down pretty bad and they start getting hit a lot more. Whereas these guys are going to be a lot, lot better than they typically are. It's good for them. If you go to the, the wood elves over here, they are just made to fight in a forest, because not only are Ancient Treemen the hardest unit in the game to spot when idle in a forest, they, uh, I don't think they actually get any bonuses, but they're, they just, they're just so hard to see until you're right on top of them, so they can literally just ambush you from almost anywhere. So go ahead and pop up one of these guys just to show you guys. And then uh, we'll get, we'll get all three types of archers, right? And we'll get these guys, these guys, see if anybody gets a bonus. And then, who else? We'll get these guys. So just kind of putting everything in a tree that we can. And we're just going to look at their bonuses and debuffs real quick. Sorry, I'm just kind of testing it out. But since I'm testing it out, uh, obviously YouTube, the YouTube community can uh, benefit from it. Still two star dragons. That army would still win against this one. That's insane. Sit there and breath attack down the Lord real quick, and then use breath attacks on anybody else while she just runs our way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put everybody. 
I haven't played with the Wood Elves in so long. I miss them. I should do another game with them. Alright. Alright, so taking a look right here with these uh, Treemen in the forest. Nothing. These uh, Spearmen. Uh, 120 melee defense. 150% accuracy. So that, that's going to help these guys. 150% accuracy, right? So they're 50% more accurate than they used to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure it also talked about them being able to... Oh no, it used to say that it gave them a bonus for um, firing to their fire rate, reloading speed. But I guess not anymore. That's unfortunate. They used to shoot faster and aim more accurately while within the forest. But uh, yeah, that's this is what it, this is what wood elves are made for. They uh, are hit much less often, and they just hit everything that they're shooting at, <laughs> like 100% of the time. So that's why I like this. If you put them like on the outskirts too. Oh yeah, the game started. You put them like on the outskirts of a forest too. They still get the bonuses, but they're not blocked by as many trees. <laughs> Poor dragons. I miss deep wood scouts too and way watchers. These guys are amazing. Being able to kite from any direction while finding stuff, that's just the most fun thing ever. But yeah, so that's that's all the bonuses there. Actually, no, these guys get a huge bonus in the forest. If you take a look right here. Guardian of the Wildwood, when they're not in the forest, or when they are in the forest, excuse me, plus 12 bonus versus large. So, like, uh, they already have a bonus versus large of 20 or something like that. Um, oh no. What? I thought, maybe I'm insane. Move out. Move out of the forest. Okay, no, they just have insane armor piercing damage. I always thought they had a bonus versus large. I guess not, but when you put them in the forest, then they get that bonus versus large of uh, 12. So they hit large targets for 44% 44 armor piercing damage. That's pretty cool. I always thought they had an innate, like, just, um, an, an army, uh, just, I can't talk right now. I always thought they had a bonus versus large on their own. No, 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 don't end battle. Just go over here. Please. This lady's running all over the place. Alright, put these girls in the forest. So they have 12, 20, 23. So they have a bonus versus large of 23 right there. That's not bad cheaper and then they can also do the uh woven mist i don't know these guys might be actually more efficient than wildwood rangers because they still have quite a bit of armor piercing damage their melee defense is not the same okay well there's some differences there's differences uh melee oriented with infantry obviously obviously for cavalry and stuff like that these girls are really good because they're so fast but i thought they had a bonus on these wildwood rangers that's that's insane but uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, just kind of testing out a few things before I cut off the video. Sometimes I do this, not very often, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed what I did today. And if you guys like what you saw, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, comment down in the comment section down below if there's something you want to learn about, something you don't know of, or an army composition you want to see, a uh, race versus a certain race, or a certain campaign you want to see. A dog over there going exorcist on the wall. Scared the crap out of me. Goodness. And um, as, for, as for that, that, that's it for today, guys. So I'll catch y'all later.